Hi there, I'm Mark Marshall from Zendula Conservation, where we save a whole bunch of little animals and creatures and plants. But today I'm talking about a snake. Now, this snake is a very popular, iconic snake in South Africa. It's called the Puff Adder. I mean, these guys are all over the place. Everybody tells you a story about a big Puff Adder. And those stories are true. Puff Adders are everywhere. In fact, they are pretty much not, not only the most um, common venomous snake, but they are also up as the most common snake around in South Africa because these guys are all over the place. They occupy all habitats except us cold snowy areas or deep, deep cool forests. But in that forest, they'll actually live on the outskirts of the forest where it's nice and warm. Now, puff adders, everyone asks, why is this puff adder in my house? Well, that's simply because puff adder, female puff adders like to sit down, relax, have a little area, and will have a very small, for example, 50 meter home range where they'll stay there all their life, basically waiting for food. Food will come, they don't need to eat a lot, and they can just chill and relax there. Now, the males are the ones that crawl around and they actually want to visit the girls, they go visit the neighbor next door, they are up and down, and they are all over. So, out of every 20 puff adders that a person comes along, you'll actually, only one of them will be a female. The rest, all males. Now, when you go walking in the bush, you'll actually turn around and say, oh, wow, I had a fantastic day. I saw three puff adders. And then I'll giggle at you and say, well, there was about 40 that you actually missed because that's how many puff adders occupy a certain area. Okay, puff adders. They have a little bit, how could you say, a little bit of a behavioral situation. They can actually sit curled up in a tight ball for up to two months in the bottom of your garden underneath some leaf litter. They'll be fast asleep. They've eaten a big meal. They don't want anyone to bug them. In fact, they are so disguised and camouflaged that dogs can't even smell them. And this puff adder is perfectly safe. You can actually accidentally stand on him and he won't even have him puff or strike at you. Okay. The second one, which is quite dangerous, is the hunting puff adders. These snakes are lazy. They don't actually go out looking for food. They will sniff out a path that they think is great where rats and mice run past, and they'll keep themselves spring-loaded waiting for a rat to come past. And then as soon as they see the movement, they'll strike out and grab that food. Unfortunately, that is on a trail when you're walking and all of a sudden the snake strikes out and bites you on the ankle or the foot. That is a mistaken bite. Unfortunately, they are bad bites because the snake wants to kill that so-called rat that he wanted to eat. So he's going to put a lot of venom through his bite into you. So that is a bad bite. So, but we can overcome this by always walking on a path, making sure we know that the path is wide enough to give us room in case we do see a snake like a puff adder. We we can walk around him okay or you have a stick in front of you swinging from side to side kicking away any puff adder that you see you make him alarmed he knows you're there and then he'll more than likely just crawl away now puff adders really really don't want to be disturbed they have what we call their little safety zone it's about a meter or so area around them that they can see Remember I said they can see because behind the puff adder, he actually can't see you. And that's when people go walking and accidentally stand on the sleeping puff adder and boom, the snake turns around and bites you out of pure defense because you're standing on him. He's going to get hurt and he's going to react negatively, all right? Now, if the puff adder does see you and you approach into his safety zone, the first thing he's going to do is going to give you a warning. He's going to give a very loud puff like a hiss. And that's good enough to make you go, oh, thank you. Thank you for warning me and not waiting to bite me. I'm going to walk away. If you do not listen to that and you carry on provoking him, obviously after three or four big warning puffs, he will strike at you. But then before that, usually they'll turn around and crawl away before actually biting you. So they really do not want to physically attack you or chase you or bite you. So, but if you carry on tormenting him, obviously he will do that. All right. Necking puff adders, in other words, holding them behind the head, is not recommended. These snakes have got very long fangs. They can swing from side to side in your hand and actually bite you that way. Or they can bite through their own jaw into the bottom of your hand. So don't try and do that. When handling a puff adder, a long stick, just shear him away, he'll go his own way. 
Now, summertime, now we're going to get a lot of puff adders all around because they are looking to breed, to mate for the season, and the females will give birth to about 20 to 30 babies. They give birth to live babies. She does not look after them. She'll just give birth and say, thank you very much, and she'll just crawl off and do her own thing. So watch next time you walk around, listen for those warnings. If you're walking around, you're a puff, you know it's a snake. Don't go looking for it. Take heed to the warning. Walk away and enjoy the outdoors. All right, we can live perfectly well with puff adders in our environment. Hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to log on to sandylook.co.za or visit on Facebook, Mark Marshall, Sandy Look Conservation. Thanks.